In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In holy baptism, Robert Stefanczyk was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all of his sin. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him, in baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Robert and to all of your servants, who having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our song.
psalm selected for this day in joyous hope and comfort of the resurrection of the dead is from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So far our text. The next lesson from Zephaniah, chapter 3, verses 16 through 20. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival, so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time I will deal with all your oppressors, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you in, and at that time when I gather you together, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth, when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. So far our text. The next lesson from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. And you were dead in the trespasses of sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love which he has loved upon us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise as we give honor to Jesus Christ and his words in the gospel. Jesus speaks, Come to me, all who, are la who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for a hymn.
grace, mercy, and peace be unto you, Sig, and Mike, your whole family, the family of God here at Holy Cross, that we might have comfort and joy in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection, and his word. Amen. The sermon text chosen by the family, very, very familiar passage from Ephesians 2, verses 1 through 10. And you were dead in the trespasses of your sins, in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that at the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not of your own doing, it is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This is the text for today. I am a little sorry this day, not just because of death and because of sadness. I'm a little sorry that I didn't get to know Bob. I didn't get to know him very well because I'm the new pastor here at Holy Cross. And I got to hear him and about him secondhand. I wish I would have got to know him better and interact with him. I got to know him better through Sig and through the families. I got to know him better through the saints. Which really is kind of a good thing, because that's the epitaph of the saints. That's the epitaph of the children of God, to say, look at this saint who has gone before us. Look at this person that we love and who loved us, and they are now with the Lord. And this is what I remember about him. This is what I liked about it. This is maybe some shady things that I didn't quite like, but that's okay because he's my brother in faith. He's my family. That's a good thing. As I learned about Bob, I learned about some things that brought him comfort and joy in this life. Some things that uh, he clung to and he really enjoyed and liked. Uh, Some of it, his military career. that took comfort and joy in serving our country. In traveling around and seeing the world, which is a great comfort and joy, of seeing all these different people and places. And really the big one, He took comfort and joy in being married to you, Sigrund. He loved you very, very much, and you loved him. Connected, that he'd say, oh, this is my family. This is my girl who I pick, and I pick her for the rest of my life. To find comfort and joy in his wife, in his children, Mike and Bobby, and also the extended family, comfort and joy being together, comfort and joy even in the children of God, coming to worship, coming to be with friends, serving with one another, sharing a laugh, sharing service. Comfort and joy of things that God gives, like going outside, golfing, going and enjoying maybe watching a football game or watching a baseball game, enjoying hobbies to bring comfort and joy. All these things are good. They're nice, especially if done in Christ our Lord. But I learned about one thing that brought Bob comfort and joy that really astounded me, made me so warm and fuzzy in my heart in remembering him and remembering the saints before. And that was when Bob said, I want baptism and confirmation. Now, I wasn't there. It was way in the past. And usually the rule of thumb with baptism is this, is you don't have any proof of the past of your baptism. Nothing written down, no remembrance from your family or anything. You then get a baptism. You do it. Because that's what God says. And that's what Bob wanted. That was his comfort and his joy. I want that. I want that for me, and I want it as an assurance. Because that's what baptism is. It's God's word to us. Nothing that we do, nothing that Bob was old or young or had this great commitment or less commitment. It's all about God saying, I want to give you comfort and joy so that you can have it for the remainder of eternity that you can be my child. And I want it put down permanently. That's what baptism is. 
I put down for you so you know it for all times. When you're sick and when you're at death's door. When you're joyful and with your family. When you die, go be with the Lord. When Jesus Christ comes back, the words of God giving comfort and joy. Comfort and joy to Bob, comfort and joy to the family. Comfort and joy for our own family of God here at Holy Cross. To say, look what God has done. Rejoice and celebrate. Look at the new life. Look at the promise of eternal life. Look at the life that even when he dies, he lives in Christ. And he's with Christ. And Jesus is coming back in the resurrection and giving new life and resurrected life. And that's the life we share. That's the life that Bob wanted. That's the life that a little bit later, almost two weeks or so, he said, I want to confirm that faith. I want to stand up, I want to say, this is the faith that God has given me. I want to let other people know that what God has done in my life to bring me comfort and joy and to serve and to live out his life in Christ. He had been doing it before, but God's word now is applied to him. He's like, wow, God has given me his word. He has comforted me. He has given me great joy. I'm his child. My question for you today is this. Do you have comfort and joy even in the midst of death? Christians are weird people. The world grieves because they'll never see them again. The world grieves because it knows no better. The world grieves because sin and death go hand in hand and that is final. But we know differently. We know better. Bob knows differently. Bob knows better that Jesus Christ came back from the dead, that he died on the cross to our sin, and God the Father raised him from the dead and said, See, look, here is the promise of new life that you have in Christ. Everybody. Do you have comfort and joy today, even in the midst of death? Even in the midst of ashes and destruction? This is what Christ gives us. This is really the Easter message. This is really Christianity our life in Christ, that even when we have the worst of things, death on our doorstep, death of loved ones, death of ourselves, that we can say, I have comfort in my Lord because He's conquered death. I have joy in my Lord Jesus because He is resurrected. He is raised from the dead and I am raised with Him. And everything is really good. I have family with God our Heavenly Father. I have my Lord and Savior. If I die, it's a good thing. If I don't, it's a good thing. I have comfort and joy now and for all eternity. It's my prayer for you today that you would have this comfort and joy too. And yes, we will grieve. We will continue to grieve and say goodbye to loved ones and say, I miss them. But it's only missing them for a short time if they're in Christ. Just only missing them for a little bit to say, I'm going to see them again, and I'm going to see them the way they should have been and should be. Resurrected bodies with Christ that don't decay, that don't get sick, that don't die. That is my comfort. That is my joy. That was Bob's. And I pray today that that's yours as well. Amen. Listen to the text again, especially the rejoicing from the Zephaniah chapter 3. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem... Fear not, O Zion, let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time I will deal with all your oppressors, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown into all the earth. At that time I will bring you in, and at that time I will gather you together. For I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth. When I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Amen. We continue at this time with the prayers of the church. Would you please rise? We pray, oh, how glorious is that kingdom wherein all the saints rejoice in Christ. They are clothed with white robes and follow the Lamb wherever he goes. Oh, God, the Father in heaven, 
O God the Son, Redeemer of the world, O God the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion, into the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Grant that all who have been nourished by the body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Give to the family of Bob and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and a sure confidence in your loving care that casting all of their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Give courage and faith to the bereaved that within the communion of your church, they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of the holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Help us pray, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord God, this day we pray that you be with the family and give them comfort and peace and joy, and be with us all, as we mourn, but also as we look forward to the day that Jesus Christ returns with all the saints. We pray for our fellowship to follow and for our sharing of memories and for our love for one another. We also pray, Lord, for our families as they travel back to their homes after today. Lord, bind us together in the church so that we may hear your word and be comforted and have great joy in Christ our Lord. All of these things we pray in and through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. We pray. God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death, He destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As a word of invitation, afterwards, uh, after the recessional, as we go out, uh, you can greet the family, but then come to Hiller Hall for a reception uh, to uh, share memories and be with one another. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we have a special family tribute. From the rolling hills of West Virginia to the Rocky Mountains of Colorado, Robert Stwansik led a life of service and commitment 
to his family. On behalf of Bob's wife, Sigrun, his son, Mike, and the rest of the Stefansic family, we want to thank you for coming to celebrate the 88 years of life that he led as a husband, a father, and a grandfather. Many of my favorite memories involve high stakes games of poker at my grandparents' house, where the fate of scoops of ice cream hung in the balance, only determined by who won and how many scoops we could have. Now, we really never actually didn't get ice cream, thanks to our grandmother. She always made sure that our bowls and our bellies were full. And on occasion, we would watch the Colorado Rockies, his beloved baseball team usually disappointing him in the end. Perhaps my favorite memory was going to Fargo's Pizza every time we would visit our grandparents. My grandpa would always drive. We would park in the same spot, sit in the same area, order the same pizza, pepperoni, extra cheese. And Grandpa would always start with a big bowl of chocolate pudding. He was a quiet man, but he did enjoy his time with his grandsons. And we did always enjoy free pizza at a restaurant that our order number would magically appear in a mirror. I will forever be grateful that his service in the Air Force brought him to Iceland, where he met the love of his life of 63 years, Sigrun, our Amma. As in any marriage, it wasn't easy, but they never gave up on each other. From Iceland to Spain to Hawaii, they made many trips around the sun, courtesy of Uncle Sam, all the while raising two rowdy little boys, Uncle Bobby and my dad. Their last adventure was here in Colorado Springs, where they settled down to be grandparents. In the past 10 years, my grandpa knew that his family was the most important thing in his life. He committed his life to Jesus about 10 years ago and got rebaptized here in this very church. He understood that love is the only thing that can heal the broken pieces inside of us. You see, we aren't promised an easy life this side of creation. We aren't promised everything will be just the way we want it to be. But we are promised a perfect heaven, one that Grandpa will now live in eternity. As he rests in peace, may we find comfort in the waiting to see him once more. As 2 Corinthians 4, 17 through 18 says, For this light, momentary affliction is preparing us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporary, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Thank you, Grandpa. for the pizza, for the poker, for the love, for the laughs, and for the hugs. And thank you for the example of what dedication and commitment really means with one's family.